The giant rockets that will launch Earth's first artificial moon are already in production as the International Geophysical Year opens. The satellite is ready, an instrument crammed 20 inch sphere that will communicate with Earth. To carry the man made moon to its orbit, a three stage rocket is required, a 72 footer that will reach five miles a second. It will be launched from Patrick Air Force Base, Florida. The burn down first stage drops into the Caribbean. Above the atmosphere, the nose cone is shed. Then the second stage is dropped, height 140 miles. A chain of radar stations tracks the flight. When the third stage cuts in, the speed reaches 18,000 miles an hour. Telescopic cameras will be trained in readiness for the moment the satellite is freed. Its momentum balanced against the pull of gravity to hold it in orbit. Every second it will broadcast data never before obtainable. Computers will predict its path with ground observers checking for variations that will give new facts about every shape of our Earth. That is how man will take his first stride into space and put a new moon in the sky. Sail seems to be making a comeback on the high seas, or maybe it's never been away. In the wake of the visits of a Norwegian square rigger and the Mayflower Second, Sweden's Albatross enters New York Harbor. The Marconi rig schooner is not merely a training ship, but a commercially operated cargo vessel as well, which adds up to a major maritime novelty in this era of jets and atomic submarines. But Albatross is up to date. Those sails are nylon. The Air Force puts on a mighty show of power for its departing Chief of Staff, General Nathan Twining. An oak leaf cluster to his Distinguished Service Medal is presented to the man who is stepping up to the top post of Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The aerial display marking the golden age of air power includes the refueling of jet interceptors, formations of transport planes, and flights of jet bombers. Canberra Jet Bomber. and the mighty eight-jet B-52s. At Fort Belvoir, Virginia, the Corps of Engineers shows off its package power reactor to military attaches of the Washington Diplomatic Corps. It's the first step in a program to develop an atomic power plant that can be transported by air to remote locations. The new reactor can put out nearly 2,000 kilowatts continuously for over a year on a single fuel charge. A major advance in military logistics promises similar strides in peaceful atomic power development. 